Seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. Eleven Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. The rain came down hard earlier today all around Metro Atlanta. This video comes to us out of Brookhaven. And while we've had a bit of a reprieve, you don't want to put those umbrellas away just yet. Let's kick things off tonight in the Storm Tracker Center. Yeah, we are watching these storms. A couple things I want you to see here. Number one, storms coming in from Alabama into West Georgia. We have another storm near Columbus that has just prompted a tornado warning that is not in our viewing area. I'll give you a closer look at that in just a second. This is what's coming into West Georgia right now. This is the line of showers and thunderstorms. This part of the storm is not severe, but it has some heavy rain and thunder and lightning with it. We've been tracking this as it's been coming out of Alabama, now crossing over the line into Georgia, into Floyd County, also the southern parts of Tuga County, Polk County, uh, into Harrelson County, Carroll County. That's where we have some of that heavier rain and the thunder and lightning. Live mode right now shows this knocking on the door of Paulding County. We have about 21 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes with this. This is going to continue moving over toward the east. So expect this shortly in a Paulding County, also in parts of Douglas County and uh, Bartow County. Be prepared for some of these heavier showers and some thunder and lightning to move into your area. This is where we have the brand new tornado warning. This is between LaGrange and Columbus. Us. This is in Harris County. This is not in our viewing area. That's why uh, you don't see the crawl scrolling across the bottom of the screen, and that's why we're not breaking into programming on 11 Alive because this is in the Columbus viewing area. However, I want you guys on the south side in Troop County and in Meriwether County and in Upson County to really keep a close eye on this. If that circulation that is in Alabama right now comes over uh, into not only Harris County, they've got the warning there now, but if that holds together as it moves up to the north, we'll have to watch to see if we do get a tornado warning for anybody in Heard, uh, Troop County or also Meriwether County and maybe Upson County. This is going to be in effect until 845, so we're going to keep a close eye on that. A lot of lightning with that, and we do see some circulation with that. It's a radar-based warning, not a uh, not an actual you know spotted confirmation of a tornado uh, on the ground there. We're fine here in Atlanta. We're going to keep watching these showers and storms that are going to be getting closer to us, but we do think they will weaken as they get closer to us here in the metro Atlanta area. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the bigger picture right now. I want to show you what we're watching. This is the uh, Storm Prediction Center. Did have us in a marginal risk for severe storms in Atlanta and in West Georgia for tonight earlier, but they have taken that away because we think these storms will weaken as they continue moving in. However, tomorrow we are in a marginal risk, a level one of five 
five risk for severe storms here. I think it would be isolated, but any storms that develop tomorrow could have some damaging wind, lightning or hail with it. Stay with us. We're keeping a close eye on that line coming in through West Georgia now and specifically that cell that has prompted that tornado warning between LaGrange and Columbus. If any of our counties are included in that, we'll, we'll break in and have much more for you coming up. Thank you, Chris. Atlanta says it wanted to follow the CDC guidelines waiting to give its blessing to businesses, parks and pools to reopen until after it had seen a 14 day downward trend in new COVID-19 cases. But reveal investigator Rebecca Lindstrom says it is a benchmark. The state which started reopening the economy a month ago has yet to meet. Today, the Department of Public Health reported 44,421 total COVID-19 positive cases in our state. Now, this is a cumulative number, so this graph can only stay flat or go up. What we want is for these bars to level out. Instead, new cases reported have gone up and down in waves with an average of 597 new cases reported each day this past week. Today, we learned 4,618 people tested positive through serology or antibody testing. Now, that doesn't mean they have COVID-19 now, but they may have had it in the past. I am told those numbers will not be added to the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases to avoid counting anyone twice. As for testing, the state promised a week ago it would pull those serology test numbers out of the total tests reported each day. Here's why that matters. The governor likes to point to the percentage of positive cases to total tests given as a sign that things are getting better. When that data, though, is lumped together, the percentage is 8%. But we've learned at least 77,000 of these tests are actually serology or antibody tests. Pull those out and our percentage increases to 9.4%. Heading into the Memorial Day weekend, we did notice a spike in new cases. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the past seven days with the week prior. While the number of people going to the hospital for treatment was almost cut in half, the average number of people dying each day has increased, as has the number of new cases reported. It will likely take a week or two before we know if this is the result of better testing or a new wave of COVID-19 in our state. We noticed this afternoon the Department of Public Health added an asterisk online next to its total number of tests, indicating it now includes antibody tests as well. You can count on our team to keep independently verifying the COVID-19 data to help you understand what it shows. Mar Sirianni reports Atlanta says it has just hit a new milestone as it enters phase two of reopening. Atlanta slowly but surely making progress. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms giving the green light to enter the easing phase. In a release, the mayor's office said as of Sunday, May 24th, Atlanta has sustained the necessary 14 day downward trend in several categories to progress. Those categories include new cases, hospitalizations and percentage of positive test cases while maintaining adequate hospital and critical care bed capacity. During phase two, individuals are urged to wear a mask in public, stay at home except for essential trips and social distance with gatherings of no more than 10 people. Restaurants and stores are encouraged to continue curbside pickup and to-go orders. Non-essential city government facilities will remain closed. Bottoms calling on all citizens for a safe transition into phase two. For a complete breakdown of each phase and what it means for you, head to 11alive.com. A New Jersey man has been helping hospitals and nursing home patients stay connected with families by donating iPads, but his next drop off in Georgia is a special one for him. 11 Alive Shinu Her shows us why. If this mask wasn't on, you would see a smile that goes from ear to ear. John Lynch being at this New Jersey hospital kind of just happened. It started off really somewhat accidental. He says the hospital reached out and asked him if he could donate a few iPads through his charity, the Lunch with Lynch Foundation. Donations poured in. In one hour, we were able to, to get over uh, 10 uh, iPads immediately, but within an hour it was 20, and then the, by, by the following 24 hours, I had well over 60 iPads in hand. And just like that, he extended his reach from New Jersey to New York, South Carolina, North Carolina, and soon Georgia and Kansas. iPads are a way to connect people uh, that are in a quarantined environment. 
Getting the idea may have kind of just happened one day, but the inspiration to do more is personal for John. Those iPads he's delivering was the only thing connecting him and his father who lived in Tucker, Georgia. I did FaceTime with my dad literally two hours before you know he transcended into heaven and um, all of a sudden it hit me. I said, wow, you know, I just had what happened to me. It's the same thing that's been happening to people all over the country, all over the world. In honor of his father, John's coming back to his Atlanta roots. He's donating iPads to Emory University Hospital, where his father was a patient for dementia, and then also to North Lake Gardens in Tucker, where his father lived in the memory care unit. The power community really, this is one of those times that it really makes a huge difference in the lives of, of the nurses, the patients, and their families. The power of community, he hopes, will keep helping people. Just pay it for it. A preliminary hearing date has been set for the father and son charged in the murder of Ahmad Aubrey. George Gregory and Travis McMichael will face a judge for the first time next Thursday. The two are accused of murdering Aubrey, an unarmed jogger shot and killed in a Brunswick neighborhood in February. The man who recorded the video of the shooting, William Roddy Bryan, also faces murder charges, but a date has not yet been set for his hearing. The mayor of Minneapolis calling for criminal charges now against a former officer who was recorded with his knee on George Floyd's neck. In the video, you can hear Mr. Floyd say, I can't breathe, sir. He later died in police custody. Earlier today, we learned that former officer Derek Chauvin is the man who kept his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck. He and three other officers fired yesterday in Minneapolis. People gathered near the site of the arrest and the killing to protest. Officers in riot gear showed up to meet them. They deployed tear gas, sending crowds scrambling into the rain. Mr. Floyd's death has had an impact on political and civil rights leaders here in our state who say they are tired of seeing situations like this one. Jennifer, you've got some reaction from local leaders tonight as well as Mr. Floyd's family. Yeah, George Floyd's sister, Bridget Floyd, spoke about losing her brother this morning on the Today Show. She and the family's attorney, Benjamin Crump, say they want the officers involved to face murder charges, and you could hear and feel her pain as she spoke. It's very heartbreaking. It's very disturbing to our peace. Uh, we're just doing the best that we can and um, making sure that we do the right thing, do what he would want us to do. And um, yes, it's very hard, it's very hard. Many civil rights and political figures here in Atlanta are talking about this as well. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottom said it's a feeling again, the one that makes me sick to my stomach and nudges me to hold my children close. Stacey Abrams said she was heartbroken and praying for the family and friends of George Floyd. She followed that tweet saying public servants have an obligation to demand reforms. And Bernice King posted side by side images of the officer kneeling on Floyd's neck and former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick. She said if you're unbothered or mildly bothered by the first knee but outraged by the second, then in my father's words, you are, quote, more devoted to order than to justice. Atlanta Police Chief Erica Shields had some very strong words to say about this as well, calling it indefensible. It is absolutely horrific. This isn't, to me, it's not about policing. This is about what are you as a human being? I mean, that is like, how have you stooped so low? It is appalling. And I'm at, I'm at a loss of words to explain how these fellow officers could stand around and watch this. Still ahead in prime time, more on how Chief Shields is responding to the case and what her department did right away with new recruits. Despite reopening plans, doctors say social distancing is a requirement. It is why some families are starting a new trend of staying in their so-called germ bubbles. We'll break it down, verify if it works, coming up next. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. There's more 11 Alive news in prime time after the break. cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. 
We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but Social isolation can be difficult, particularly for families with small children who might not understand the need to stay apart during COVID-19. So when we heard this new term germ bubble, we thought it might be too good to be true. The idea is from a group with one or two other families and you all can see each other, but not anybody else. And it sounds good for people who are tired of quarantine, but does it work? We sent Caitlin Ross to verify. Welcome to my germ bubble. That's how my brother greeted me after not seeing him in person for the past three months. It was a new term to me, germ bubble, but his family has been practicing it the entire quarantine. Basically what it means is they formed a tight circle of friends who only get together with each other and talk frequently about any exposure to COVID-19 any of them may have had to keep all of them safe. Turns out he's not the only one. On Facebook, Autumn and Aubrey both told me they were doing the same thing, but called theirs a quarantine and quarantine crew. I guess that sounds better than germ bubble. The germ bubble, uh, or as I like to call it, the quarantine family. Whatever you want to call it, does it work? That's why we called in ER doctor Murdad Sami. He's been treating COVID-19 patients since the first cases were diagnosed in Georgia and told me he's been advocating for these germ bubbles just as long. We can do fun things, but we have to be wise about it. The first rule of the germ bubble? The, the rules are... Well, first of all, you have to be able to trust that person that they're going to follow the rules. He says it's important to be on the same page as the other families in your germ bubble. Talk through what's acceptable, like going to the grocery store, and what's not, like dining inside a restaurant. On Facebook, Emily says that's what she's doing with her daughter's friend's family. And Dr. Atsami says that's exactly how it's supposed to work. That's exactly it. We have to all be on the same page. We have to understand that we're going to abide by the rules and kind of go through all the scenarios that potentially could, could come about. Dr. Atsami recommends everyone get tested for COVID-19 before you start hanging out. Then you have to quarantine completely until those results come back negative. Finally, you have to be willing to speak up if something doesn't feel right. Everybody understands that if we break the rules, then we'll just have to call it off. But if you all agree to the same rules and you all agree to follow them, we can verify that yes, germ bubbles really do work. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, keeping an eye on these storms coming into West Georgia with heavy rain, thunder, and lightning. This particular part that we're seeing here around I-20 and northward, that is not classified as severe, but it does have some heavy rain with it. Hold on, let me make sure I'm checking on, hearing some new things coming in on chat right now. Nothing to impact us. Uh, but you can see here these showers and storms with thunder and lightning with them and pockets of heavy rain from Rome up into Chattooga County, also down into parts of, uh, you know, the rest of Floyd County, Polk County. County, Harrelson County, down into Carroll County. This is moving into Paulding County right now with that heavier rain, and you are hearing uh, the thunder, seeing some of the lightning there with that as it's moving over toward the east. Not in Atlanta yet, but we do expect some of this rain to move into uh, the Atlanta area. The main threats with this will be those pockets of heavy rain, the lightning here. About 22 lightning strikes in this red box in the past 15 minutes. Now let me take you down to the south and west. We were talking about this a few moments ago. There's a tornado warning in effect for Harris County. This is just outside of our viewing area. That's why you don't see the crawl at the bottom of your screen, and that's why we're not breaking into 11 alive. Uh, this is coming out of Alabama there in Lee County 
crossing over the line into Georgia into Harris County. Now I want you folks in Troop County and also Meriwether County, Upson County to keep a close eye on this. If this rotation happens to hold together, it's going to be in effect until 845 for Harris County. If this rotation right here that is crossing over the line into Georgia, if that holds together, and moves into or they have to issue a warning for uh, Troop County or Meriwether County, we will break into programming on 11 Alive and then you will see the crawl rolling across the bottom of your screen. This is a radar based warning coming out of Alabama. We'll keep an eye on it as it moves into Georgia to see if they have to you know, extend that warning, but it's moving very slowly, generally to the east at about 15 miles an hour. We're hoping that it will die out as it crosses over the state line. Elsewhere, we're fine in Atlanta, just watching those showers that'll be moving our way. Also watching what is left of Bertha, tropical depression moving up into the Carolinas, and then this storm here, and then those storms in Mississippi that'll be pushing our way, uh, that'll impact us tomorrow. Take a look at what we're watching. Uh, as you take a look outside, this is in Rome, all right? So you see those showers in Rome? Again, not severe, but the visibility is lower. We have some good rain coming in. The wind is blowing as well. Uh, so those showers are, are pretty intense in some spots. Now the Storm Prediction Center actually took us out of the marginal risk. They're keeping that mainly over into Alabama. We have general showers and thunder showers here. We really think that that is going to weaken those showers as they move over to the east. But tomorrow, as another wave of rain comes in, we have the potential for some of those to turn severe. It's a level one risk. The main threats would be damaging wind, lightning, and also hail. Temperatures right now 72. It's a little cooler in Carrollton with some of that rain moving in that cools it down. Rome, you've cooled down to 68 with some of the showers that are moving your way. Tomorrow we have scattered showers here. Highs near 83. We're going to go with a 6 on the wasometer. That's our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. So we have this shower activity and storminess down to the south. We really think that's going to weaken as it moves to the east. Watching these showers that continue to move in tonight, just kind of scattered stuff tonight. And as, as you can see here, it's all weakening. In the morning, a few scattered showers around. And then as we get into lunchtime and into the afternoon, afternoon hours. It's not a widespread coverage of rain around, but as the sun breaks through and warms things up a little bit and we have some of those scattered showers around with that warmer air, those are the ones that have the potential uh, to turn strong and then we'll clear out Thursday night. Friday rain chance is a little bit lower. We're going to see our high temperatures that are going to be uh, in the 80s and the rain chance at only about 30% and then that rain chance goes down even more as we get into uh, Friday with that 30% chance for shower and then even more on Saturday. So here's a look at the outlook 83 degrees for a high temperature on Thursday, uh, 85 on Friday. You see how those rain chances are coming down to 30% Friday, then 20% on Saturday highs near 84. And then I want you to really look at this Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, you see a lot of sun symbols there. No raindrops on the forecast. That's good. We really could use uh, a period of drying out and a system to come through and kind of clean out our atmosphere. And that's what's going to happen to break us of this pattern of these scattered showers. So not only are you seeing the lack of rain here on these days, but also lower humidity with the dew points that are going to be coming down and much drier air that will move our way going into next week to give us that break. Temperatures comfortable really here in the lower 80s Monday and Tuesday back to the mid 80s on Wednesday as we see just a few more clouds that will build in on Wednesday as well. So we just have to get through showers and storms tomorrow, those showers tapering off Friday, and then we go into that drier pattern and uh, and lower humidity pattern going into the second half of the weekend and next week too. A man wrongfully incarcerated for more than 35 years with a strong performance last night on America's Got Talent. Next, how his song touched so many and inspired Simon Cowell to join the fight for justice for others. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. 
Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. is a clip that millions have now seen and talked about Archie Williams singing on NBC's America's Got Talent after 37 years of being unjustly imprisoned for a crime he did not commit. Natalie Morales had a chance to speak with him about that incredible moment. My name is Archie Williams. Tuesday night, Archie Williams took the stage on NBC's America's Got Talent and made an impression no one will soon forget. Don't let the sun A show-stopping moment that he never could have imagined just last year. On March 21st, 2019, Archie Williams was released from Angola Prison in Louisiana, 37 years after being falsely accused and convicted of rape. Sweet right now. Archie was just 22 in 1983 when he was arrested and stood trial for the 1982 rape and stabbing of a white woman in her Baton Rouge home. Despite multiple alibis, fingerprints that didn't match his, and eyewitnesses saying Archie wasn't the guy, he was convicted and sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Being innocent is, is, is a thing where you never give up on yourself. That kept Archie going, and in 1995, after having already served 12 years, he wrote to the Innocence Project. By the grace of God, I'm still holding on hoping and praying someone will answer my letter. His case was screaming out that he was innocent. It took a new judge in 2019 to order the fingerprint test. Within eight hours, they would found the real rapist, and within a week, Archie was free. What does freedom feel like, Archie? I don't think you can explain it. The fullness of freedom. For Archie, this is what freedom sounds like. You found your voice. Singing was my, was my sport. That sport led him to an unusual place. I, uh, I was just incarcerated for 37 years for somebody else's crime. Ooh. 37 years of pain and suffering, and now joy in each note. But losing everything is like the sun going down on me. Those words that much more powerful coming from Archie. I, I would never ever listen to that song uh, in the same way ever again. One person influenced my life, and that was Oprah. And I remember her saying to me, if you're in a position to make television shows, you have the ability to change people's lives. And because of Archie, he's become an ambassador for the Innocence Project. We're going to do something about this together because I believe that when enough people unite, great things happen. They say the truth will set you free. For Archie, it's done more than that. It's given him back his life, including a daughter he didn't know he had. To think of her 
going all those years without me. And a future with new dreams. I want to make up all the lost years. It's like the sun going down. Still to come in prime time, the Atlanta Motor Speedway has been thrown out there as a solution for the city's street racing problem, but Atlanta's police chief says it's not just about having a place to race. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Prime Time, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit CDC. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, and we are watching these storms that are moving in from Alabama into West Georgia. Two specific spots that we're watching. This uh, that's really along I-20 in Northward that has some heavy rain with it, thunder and lightning. And then there's one down near Columbus that has prompted a tornado warning just outside of our viewing area. I'm going to take you closer to that in just a second. First, though, I want you to see this that's been moving out of Alabama, came through Cleburne and Randolph County, and this line of showers and storms now is stretching from Rome into parts of Bartow County, Paulding County, also Polk County. It is out of Harrelson County now. It's in the northern parts of Carroll, moving into Douglas. That's where we have some of that heavier rain. Also some thunder and lightning with this that is all moving over toward the east. The individual cells are moving northeast, but this entire line is moving over to the east. We have had some uh, some gusty winds with this, and the main threat is heavy rain and also some of the lightning. In fact, we've got about 18 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes moving east 
northward. I want you folks in the rest of Bartow County over near Alatoona Lake uh, to be prepared for this. Cobb County, you'll feel this in a bit. Dallas, Georgia, Paulding County, you're about to feel that. Also into Douglasville, you're about to experience some of that as well. I want to take you though down to the south. This is just outside of our viewing area. All right, you see LaGrange right here. Here's Columbus. In between this, we have some rotation that has been coming out of Alabama into Harris County, Georgia right there along uh, 185 between 185 and I-85 there around Langdale. And that has prompted a tornado warning for Harris County. Now again, that's not in our viewing area. That's why you don't see the crawl at the bottom of their screen. That's why we've, we're not breaking in on 11 Alive. It's going to be in effect until 845. Now we have to watch this closely because this rotation really seems to be holding together as it's crossed over the line from Alabama and into Georgia. Now I want you folks in Troop County and also folks in Merriweather County to keep an eye on this because this is moving northeast very slowly. It's only moving at about 15 miles an hour. But if this rotation holds together as it moves up in through Harris County, uh, we'll wait and see if they issue a tornado warning for Troop County or Merriweather County. If they do that, you'll see the crawl. We'll have to break into programming not only here on the ATL, but also uh, on 11 Alive. So we're keeping a close eye on that. This is Interstate 185. You know, that's the kind of the bypass that goes from the, you know, from 85 here down toward Columbus. So this uh, rotation that still looks like it's holding together pretty well is getting really closer to 185, and that would take it a little bit more uh, closer to Pine Mountain as well. A lot of lightning with that. You can see that motion again moving very slowly. Um, but then here in Atlanta, uh, we don't have anything now, but we're watching these showers that are going to keep moving a little bit closer to our direction. So let me show you what we're watching. We have what's left of Bertha moving up into North Carolina. That's what's uh, a tropical depression now. And then more storms back into Mississippi that we have to watch to possibly impact us tomorrow. Here's a look at the bigger picture. You can see what we're watching here. This is live in Rome, uh, where we have general rain there. We've had a little thunder and lightning in parts of Floyd County, but you can see visibility is lower. Plenty of wet roads there in downtown Rome, too. Now, what's interesting is the Storm Prediction Center has taken us out of the marginal risk. Earlier, we were showing parts of West Georgia in that marginal or level one risk. We're no longer in that. We really think these storms are going to weaken as they move closer to us, but we do have a marginal risk for our area tomorrow with a few isolated stronger storms. Stay with us. I, I'm still watching that storm down in Harris County. I'll let you know if that warning gets extended northward uh, and then we'll talk about more about any specific storms that we could have tomorrow as well. Days after a major street racing crackdown in Atlanta, the city started talking uh, potentially about using Atlanta Motor Speedway as a legal and safe solution. Atlanta's police chief has some concerns about that. 11 Alive's Tracy Amick Peer explains. Atlanta police say the good news is after the major crackdown two weekends ago, they've only had a few more arrests for street racing. But when it comes to a long term solution, Chief Shields tells me that it's not just a matter of giving them a place where they can race. They want their five minutes of Internet fame and they want to show that they are doing this illegally. They're doing it on city streets. They're stopping interstates. So police chief Erica Shields says a legal venue like the Atlanta Motor Speedway wouldn't stop the illegal street racing problem. Chief Shields says during the bust two weekends ago, there were sponsors involved from as far away as Detroit. Interestingly, Detroit had set up a legal space for people to do just that, to drive. But there was this group of individuals who had no interest in that. They want the illegality of it, so they came to Atlanta. So they will continue to crack down here because with street racing, she says lives are at stake. Their conduct is so reckless. It's, it's just astounding how little regard they have for any human life, including their own. Chief Shields told me that now they're trying to find and arrest the sponsors since they are encouraging illegal activity. But since those sponsors are from out of state, that operation will likely involve the FBI. In an exclusive interview with our friends at UJSports.com, Governor Brian Kemp talked about what he is hoping sports will look like in the fall. Our Alex Glaze explains why the governor is optimistic that we'll see fans in the stands during football season. Governor Brian Kemp is one of the many football fans who wants to see college football in the fall. Everybody wants to have college football. We can't keep living in a shelter in place state uh, economically or, you know, just from a, a mental health standpoint. You know, people need need outlets and certainly sports. Mm -hmm. Especially in the southeast is one of them. 
but even he admits he's not quite sure what it's going to look like just yet. As some sports leagues around the world have begun to return to play during the COVID-19 pandemic, fanless games have become the norm. But Kemp is optimistic fans could be in the stands this fall. I'm optimistic, and um, I want to see it happen. I don't know if that looks like a capacity crowd on Labor Day night mm -hmm. or, you know, no no fans at all. I think we got to wait and see. The, the data continues to move in the right direction. As for the players and coaches on the field, a big concern has been what happens if someone tests positive? That's definitely you know, part of the puzzle because you're probably going to have that happen at, at some point. And, you know, I don't think it's any different than with the public is just to make sure that you have the ability to, to find that out as quickly as possible. Sports is a big part of our culture. For many, it's an escape from the trials and tribulations of everyday life. Sports bring the community together, but public safety needs to be the priority, and leagues around the world are trying to return to play as safely as possible. At Kennedy Space Center today, we are in the midst of a delay, and we're going to have to wait a couple of more days for liftoff. Today's scheduled launch of SpaceX, the rocket was scrubbed, bad weather prevented it from taking off. Here's NBC's Jay Gray. We continue to violate a couple different weather rules that we now do not expect to clear in time to allow for a launch today. For now, history will have to wait. You are go for 5.100 launch scrub. Clouds and rain keeping the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on the ground for at least another two days with the next launch attempt scheduled for the weekend. It was a good effort by the teams and we understand. When the mission does take flight, it will be the first manned American-made spacecraft to lift off from U.S. soil in almost nine years a new era in space exploration. We are building to this uh, public-private partnership on this grand scale of going back to the moon and then ultimately going to Mars. Is, uh, it's a, an ex extremely exciting time right now to be in the, the, the space business. A business that is looking up despite today's delay. President Trump was slated to be there for the launch. He says he will return to Florida Saturday for that second attempt, which will come at 322 Eastern time. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 
There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. debate. There is one particular type online that's growing in popularity, but medical experts say it does more harm than good. Ron Jones explains. You may have seen them advertised online or worn in public. They're masks with what's called an exhalation valve, promising better comfort than traditional masks, offering a cooler and easier to breathe experience. According to the CDC, the mask with the exhalation valves keeps the person safe, but not the population. Exactly. Yeah, and that's exactly correct. 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy says the CDC makes it clear on their website that these particular masks help no one but the person who's wearing it. The exhalation valve or the valve that helps, helps you breathe out sends all of your breath out into the environment. She says if you have the coronavirus, you are still potentially spewing COVID-19 droplets through the valve to others. Wearing the proper mask without an exhalation valve keeps everyone safe. When we talk about wearing masks to protect us against coronavirus, we're actually wearing the mask to protect other people from our droplets or germs. So if you want to know what you should look for when you're picking out your next mask, we have linked the CDC's recommendations on 11alive.com. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Tracker, still watching this line of showers, thunderstorms that are moving in, uh, getting closer to us here in Atlanta. You can see we're fine right now, but if you go out I-20 over into Douglas County, that's where you start to run into some of this rain. Also, uh, that extends northward into Paulding County, also Bartow County, Floyd County, where we have those pockets of heavy rain, also some thunder and lightning. Now, this part of the storm uh, does not have anything severe with it. We don't have any warnings here north of I-20 with this. Uh, and these showers will continue moving, getting in closer to Alatoona Lake, also into Cobb County, Cherokee County. This will be moving your way in a little bit. And this in Douglas County will be pushing in on the west side of the perimeter very shortly. Not as strong uh, down near Carrollton and into parts of Heard County. The main threats we're dealing with with this pockets of heavy rain and the lightning. We now have about 12 lightning strikes earlier. We had a lot more than that, so that's helping to confirm this lightning count number going down, showing that that line is weakening. Now, something else we're watching. Uh, good news here is this storm in Harris County that did have a tornado warning that just expired at 845, and the National Weather Service is allowing that to expire and saying that this uh, area of rotation that we've been keeping an eye on is showing signs of weakening. So for right now, Based on what we see with these last sweeps that we have going through here, we're hoping that they do not need to issue a warning for Troop County or Meriwether County, but we're going to be watching this very closely. That bit of uh, what's left of that rotation is about to cross over Interstate 185 there. That's what goes here from Troop County down toward the Columbus area. This is 85 going into Alabama, more toward Auburn. So we're going to keep an eye on that. We hope that that couplet or that area of rotation doesn't ramp up anymore as it's about to cross over 185. But if it does and the Weather Service does have to issue a warning for uh, any parts of Troop County or Meriwether County will be breaking in for that and breaking in on 11 Alive as well. So this is the area that we're watching, <coughs> excuse me, that down to the south as well as this uh, that again is not classified as severe that's going to be moving closer to us. And then there are more storms back into Mississippi too. Uh, really just this is the part we're going to have to watch for tonight. And then watching what's left of Bertha, Tropical Depression Bertha moving up into uh, North Carolina, not really having much of an impact on our weather. Let me take you out there live right now and you can see what's happening. Uh, this is in Rome. I know I keep showing this camera, but that's the one that's showing us the rain. And as I've been checking on this, we occasionally see some flashes of lightning in the sky as well. The winds are blowing a little bit. The roads are wet. The camera lens is wet there as well uh, with those showers moving through. 
Now earlier, we were talking about a marginal risk or level one of five risk for parts of West Georgia. But during the afternoon, the Storm Prediction Center pushed that back into Alabama. We just have general showers and thunder showers here possible. We really don't think we'll see anything here severe. However, tomorrow we are back to that marginal risk or the level one of five risk. Now we don't think the rain and storms tomorrow will be widespread. But any storms that develop tomorrow, it is possible they could have some damaging winds, lightning or hail and temperatures right now. Lower 70s. Look how it cooled in Carrollton with the rain. Rome, you cooled down to 63. LaGrange is still at 73, uh, 72 and Peachtree City at 73. Tomorrow highs uh, in the 80s back up to 83 degrees with some of those scattered showers. We're going to go with the six on the wasometer. So here's the rain coming in tonight. See how that's weakening as it moves in. It's really going to start falling apart overnight. Just some general scattered showers in our area in the morning. A, a few spotty showers, but not everybody getting wet. And then at lunchtime, still some scattered showers too. And as you can see, again, not really a lot of red and oranges showing up here, but with uh, the temperatures heating up and adding a little bit more of some instability to that with that heating into the 80s, any of these showers that develop could be strong, and that's why we have that marginal risk. And we do think that the rain chances on Friday uh, will be down a little bit more, not down to zero, but down to about 30% here on Friday with just a few of those scattered showers, especially into the afternoon and evening. And then the rain chances coming down even more on Saturday to 20%. And see how we warm up? 83 Thursday, 85 Friday, 84 Saturday with the rain chance coming down to 30%. Friday, Saturday percent uh, Saturday, the percentage goes down to 20% and then we are dry Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, mostly sunny skies, partly cloudy though Wednesday highs in the lower 80s back to 84 on Wednesday, but not only do we not see rain here, but the humidity levels will go down too with that drier air in place. Next, a new report raising concerns about the accuracy of COVID-19 test We're breaking it down for you ahead. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
The CDC sending out a warning tonight. They say antibody tests may not be accurate enough to make important policy decisions. According to the agency, the test may give more inaccurate readings, particularly if the virus is not prevalent in the community. As a result, the CDC says the antibody test results should not be used to make decisions regarding people returning to work. The test should also not be used to determine the immune status in individuals until the presence, durability, and duration of immunity is therefore established. And new reporting from NBC News tonight also raising questions about the accuracy of COVID-19 tests. Experts tell NBC News up to one in five of them could be missing positive cases. Our Drew Hinkey explains. Since March, dozens of tests for COVID-19 have been quickly developed with the Food and Drug Administration granting emergency use authorization so they could be rushed into use. <coughs> Now, NBC News is reporting experts believe tests used to diagnose the virus may be missing up to 20% of positive cases, meaning they instead show a false negative. There are several possible reasons. No test is 100% perfect all the time. Earlier this month, we talked with Dr. Maria Sundrum, an epidemiologist with Emory's Rollins School of Public Health. She said one type of COVID-19 test includes collecting specimens to test with a nasal swab, and if not done properly, the person taking the sample could miss the virus. If I took a nasal swab and I, I tested it and it was negative, I just know that there is no virus in my nose, but there could be some in my throat. Timing is also key, according to researchers with the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health in Baltimore, who published a study this month in the Annals of Internal Medicine. The lead author telling NBC News testing too early after exposure to the virus substantially raises the risk of a false negative. And quote, if you have someone who has been exposed and they've started to develop symptoms, it probably makes sense to wait a few days before testing. The research team found testing three days after symptoms appeared returned the most accurate results. Dr. Sundrum said antibody tests designed to find signs in a blood sample that someone had the coronavirus can also return false negatives. A person may have recently been exposed to coronavirus, but if their immune system has not had time to produce the antibodies needed to test positive, their test result would come back negative. You won't see a big increase in antibody until maybe two weeks after the in initial infection. And because of the chance of false negative test results, no matter the results someone receives, positive or negative, Dr. Sundrum recommends they continue to follow CDC health precautions, including wearing a mask in public, social distancing, and hand washing to protect themselves and everyone around them. All right, many people on unemployment probably don't want to think about their credit score, but a viral post warns that filing may impact your score. We'll verify if it's true ahead on prime time. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1101 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and... Graduating at the top of your class is not easy. For twins in Gwinnett County, they say having each other helped a lot. Elwin Lopez talked to them today. In case you didn't know, I'm Alice, and this is my little brother, Bill. That is me right there. Alice and Bill Ow are fraternal twins. Several weeks ago, they recorded this virtual graduation. I don't think I've heard any words as devastating as virtual graduation. Both finishing at the top of the Peachtree Ridge class of 2020. Alice is valedictorian and Bill as salutatorian. A title Bill says wouldn't have been possible without the support and motivation of his twin sister. It really inspired me to try to achieve salutatorian. She definitely helped me learn that this was definitely a real possibility for me. Built in best friends, Alice and Bill say they are different in many ways. I'm definitely more uh, relaxed and more of a type B personality, whereas Alice is definitely a type A personality. That's how she became valedictorian. In the fall, they will find themselves apart for the first time. Bill will be heading to Princeton and Alice to Yale. I am kind of sad about having to be apart from Bill, and it is going to be like a challenging time for both of us. While challenging times are ahead for the twins this fall when they have to say their goodbyes, they told me they're spending a lot of their quality time together this summer instead of going on some of the trips they had planned separately before this pandemic. And when they've been able to accomplish so much together, I'm probably not the only parent wondering if they've got a little secret to their success. Cheryl, they tell me that they've leaned on one another, that they've collaborated together throughout high school, and Bill's advice to other students who may be spending more time at home during this pandemic is to perhaps learn a new skill, which could lead to finding a new passion. And he says that could make all the difference, both personally and academically. Well-rounded. All right, Ellen, thanks a lot. From powerless to powerful, how a local teacher is using her gifts to say thank you to those on the coronavirus front lines. Atlanta entering the next phase of reopening, how the city's restrictions stack up against the state's loosening guidelines. It is appalling, and I'm at, a, I'm at a loss of words to explain how these fellow officers can stand around and watch this. Atlanta's police chief says the fatal arrest of a black man at the hands of white police officers in Minneapolis is horrific. The message she's sharing with her officers tonight. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. The rain coming down hard earlier today around Metro Atlanta. This video comes in from Brookhaven. And uh, while we have a break right now, don't put away those umbrellas just yet. We're going to begin everything tonight in the Storm Tracker Center. Are we tracking any severe weather tonight or going into tomorrow, Chris? Well, we've been watching this line of storms coming through West Georgia, and this is getting closer to Atlanta right now. I'm talking to about close to 500 people right now on Facebook Live. That's why you see my phone here. A lot of folks are wondering what's happening with these storms as they move through. The good news is as these have been moving in from Alabama, they're actually showing some signs of weakening. But here we are in Atlanta. No rain here yet, but as you go out, I-20 here into Douglas County. You see some of that rain pushing in there through uh, uh, Paulding County near Dallas. This is moving into the western parts of Cobb. It's in Bartow County, about to move into Cherokee. It curves up through Gordon, also Floyd, and into Chattooga County, where we have some of that heavier rain. We also have some thunder and lightning with this. The good news is the lightning count has been coming down. Right now, we have about eight lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. Earlier, that was over 50 lightning strikes. So that's showing that this is weakening somewhat as it gets closer to Atlanta. Another thing we've been watching is uh, this area of rain and thunderstorm activity that is in Harris County, Georgia. That prompted a tornado warning earlier. Now, we didn't break into programming on 11 Alive. We didn't have the crawl running there because Harris County is not in our viewing area. However, we're watching this weak rotation and it has been weakening. Uh, it expired at 845, the tornado warning for Harris County. However, if this happens to tighten up as it moves into Troop County or into Meriwether County and they issue a warning for them, then we will be breaking into programming, not only here on the ATL, but also on 11 Alive. And you'll see the crawls running at the bottom of the screen. But 
We have been watching this weekend somewhat. It has uh, it's moving at about 15 miles an hour near Hopewell, but again, not a tornado warning there. A lot of lightning and heavy rain with that cell, so be aware of that in Troop County, also into Meriwether County as that moves our way. Here in Atlanta, just watching this push in, you'll see some showers here tonight, maybe some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning. Let me take you out there live right now, and you can see what we're watching as we zoom on out. You'll be able to see that that system we're watching in North Carolina, which left the Bertha moving out. Additional storms in Mississippi that will keep an eye on. This is a live look in Rome right now where we have have a lot of rain that's been moving through. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center just removed the uh, marginal risk out of Alabama. We have a general risk here, but tomorrow that level one risk does move back into our area with nothing widespread, but the potential for some isolated stronger storms tomorrow. I'll break that down for you coming up. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, sir. You know, today the U.S. reaches a grim milestone 100,000 deaths from COVID-19. NBC News is reporting we are the first nation to actually reach that number, Aisha. Meanwhile, more Georgia communities continue the steady march to reopen. Governor Brian Kemp swinging through Central and West Georgia today. He visited a temporary medical pod in Macon and companies helping with coronavirus supplies there and in Columbus. During his tour, he also reiterated his invitation to the Republican National Convention saying he feels the state could host the August event safely. You know, that would likely have a huge impact on Atlanta, which city officials are now talking about easing restrictions slowly. Atlanta is now entering phase two of reopening. Its COVID-19 guidelines are still more restrictive than the state's. 11 Alive's Doug Richards takes a look at both. The mayor's office stresses that the city's stay-at-home guidelines are based on evolving scientific data and not on the calendar. The guidelines from the city are also strictly voluntary. The city and state guidelines allow essential trips. Maybe the people who clustered in Edgewood Avenue's bar district last weekend thought this was essential. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms you know, thinks otherwise. And so what I saw um, were primarily young people who, who think that they are invincible and that it can't happen to them. And the sad reality is it, it can happen to anyone. Atlanta's new guidelines for phase two have familiar themes encouraging essential travel only. Social distancing gatherings of no more than 10 people to go and delivery orders only from restaurants and retailers. That's more restrictive compared to the state law, which allows limited dining room service in Atlanta and beyond. The city restrictions eased because the mayor says over a 14 day span, Fulton County health data showed consistent decreases in COVID cases, COVID hospitalizations, hospital bed use, and the percentage of positive COVID tests. I believe the decrease in numbers that we saw were in large part due to the fact that we took very aggressive actions. Yet the state law prevails. It provided the loophole for city restaurants and lounges to schedule boisterous dance parties last weekend, even though bars and restaurant licenses still have to remain closed. It's America. I expect to see that. But I also expect to see people of good conscience saying I'm going to think about somebody other than myself and I'm not going to put my family and my friends at risk. If Fulton County's health stats were to improve even further, the city envisions new guidelines that would allow the city to start accepting special event applications. But in order for that to happen, there would need to be more contact tracing and more COVID testing. You know, our numbers team wants to bring you more information about what data the mayor is actually talking about. So we requested information by zip code from the Fulton County Board of Health to see where we're actually seeing an increase of cases within the city of Atlanta. This is what we learned. Here are the top three zip codes here, folks. 30331 is by far the most impacted area. This is just east of Six Flags over Georgia. Neighborhoods like Greenbrier and Princeton Lakes and um, Mays and Wisteria Gardens. This zip code is currently reporting 346 cases of COVID-19. 
30318 is another area where we're seeing those cases rise. That zip code covers Underwood Hills all the way south to Buckhead. It also includes Cary Park and Lincoln Homes. Here we've seen 31 new cases since last Friday. And 30342 is another hot spot we're watching. This is the area just north of Buckhead. That's Christine Park all the way up to the edge of 285. This is the area where we're seeing the biggest jump with 45 new cases over the past five days. A New Jersey man has been helping hospitals and nursing home patients stay connected with families by donating iPads, but his next drop off in Georgia is a special one for him. 11 Alive Chinu Her shows us why. If this mask wasn't on, you would see a smile that goes from ear to ear. John Lynch being at this New Jersey hospital kind of just happened. It started off really somewhat accidental. He says the hospital reached out and asked him if he could donate a few iPads through his charity, the Lunch with Lynch Foundation. Donations poured in. In one hour, we were able to, to get over uh, 10 uh, iPads immediately. But within an hour, it was 20. And then the, by, by the following 24 hours, I had well over 60 iPads in hand. And just like that, he extended his reach from New Jersey to New York, South Carolina, North Carolina, and soon Georgia and Kansas. iPads are a way to connect people uh, that are in a quarantined environment. Getting the idea may have kind of just happened one day, but the inspiration to do more is personal for John. Those iPads he's delivering was the only thing connecting him and his father who lived in Tucker, Georgia. I did FaceTime with my dad literally two hours before you know he transcended into heaven and um, all of a sudden it hit me. I said, wow, you know, I just had what happened to me. It's the same thing that's been happening to people all over the country, all over the world. In honor of his father, John's coming back to his Atlanta roots. He's donating iPads to Emory University Hospital, where his father was a patient for dementia. And then also to North Lake Gardens in Tucker, where his father lived in the memory care unit. The power community really, this is one of those times that it really makes a huge difference in the lives of, of the nurses, the patients, and their families. The power of community, he hopes, will and keep helping process, people. Uh, Just pay it for it. 11 Alive is dedicated to bringing you facts and perspective throughout the pandemic. Check the special coronavirus section of our 11 Alive app for more on what is reopening and the reopening phases and what that means for you and where Georgia stands on flattening the curve. It is the video that has struck a chord all over the country. The death of George Floyd. This happened to this man in Minneapolis. Floyd died after video shows an officer kneeling on his neck for minutes, about nine minutes, they say. Even as people ask the officer to stop and question his actions, four officers have been fired for what happened. But Floyd's family says they want the officers charged with murder. And late today, the city's mayor has called for charges against the arresting officer. This sparked protests both yesterday and today and has even touched home here in Georgia. Atlanta Police Chief Erica Shields spoke with us today, calling what happened horrific. Chief Shields said Floyd's death goes beyond policing, says it is about who you are as a human being. She also told us APD does not train using that technique and neither does the state. As you know that the, the communities in Atlanta are looking at this and saying, wait a minute, this could be my son, my brother, my uncle. And so it really, it puts an added burden on law enforcement across the country when something this egregious is uh, committed. We took the video and we play that frame by frame for our recruits to show them how not to do it, to show the consequences of their actions and to make them understand even better with greater clarity what their role is, not just as the arresting officer, but as the officer who is standing by to intervene and stop such egregious behavior. Chief Shields also said this is a time for law enforcement agencies to go to their academics and review their training practices to make sure nothing like that is being used. You know, tomorrow the latest unemployment numbers will be released, and nationally we're seeing the number of weekly unemployment insurance claims decline, a hopeful sign for our economic future. In Georgia, the jobless rate stands at nearly 12% as we speak. Hundreds of thousands are filing for unemployment all across the state. But could signing up for those benefits actually impact your credit score? Our Verify team checks with the experts.
There's all sorts of confusing information out there about this pandemic, but the Verify team is here to bring your questions to the vetted experts to get the truth. A viewer asked us to verify, will unemployment from COVID-19 impact your credit score? Our sources here are Experian, one of the three major credit bureaus, and Credit Karma. They both say no. Losing your job by itself is not going to ding your credit score. Being unemployed does not impact your credit score directly. Whether you are currently employed or not is not part of a credit report. You see, your credit report doesn't show if you've applied for unemployment, nor does it show your employment history. All it shows is who your employer was when you applied for new credit. If you get a car loan, you might have that car loan for now on average anywhere from five to seven years. If you change jobs during that time, and that's the only new credit you apply for, we wouldn't have a, that new employer reported to us. But here's the catch. Losing your job can impact you indirectly if you miss a payment on your credit card, a loan, or take on more debt, then yeah, your credit score can take a hit. All right, you know, we know you have questions about finances and unemployment during this pandemic. So 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. So text them right directly to us at 404-885-7600. And please include your name and where you are from. Then tune in tomorrow at noon when we take your questions to our 11 Alive financial expert, Andrew, Andrew Palos. Helping friends and neighbors helping neighbors. The scope is beyond anything that we've ever seen before. A legion of volunteers answering the call how local efforts are helping feed a growing number of Georgia families. And don't forget, we're streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation down in the community section. More 11 Alive news in prime time coming up after the break. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. A Girl Scout came to the Atlanta Community Food Bank with just 10 bucks in her hand to donate, and she couldn't believe her allowance translated into 40 meals. The kind of gift has never been needed than ever before here. There has been a 30% growth in the people who need food over an eight-week period. And now we are reaching over the million person mark. We're doing about two times as much food as we did this time last year. Last week alone, we distributed about two million pounds to the community. They look at us and they say, I've been a supporter of the food bank for many, many years, and I never thought I would have to be on this side of things. You know, they're grateful for it. Obviously, the food bank staff and the National Guard working with them have been putting in long hours, so it was a big boost when they got surprise lunch delivered from NOR. Now, they provided lunch for employees at 11,000 food banks across the country. And that need is for healthy, wholesome food was evident during a fresh produce giveaway at Hillside International Church. Anyone who drove up received a free box of fruit and vegetables fresh from local farms. This is all part of the USDA's Farmers to Families Initiative. Hillside plans to host the giveaways every Wednesday. 
And some farmer markets are now going to be offering up drive up. That's right, the Department of Agriculture has launched Georgia Grown cool, to man. Go. And you can pick up the, at the location, you can pick up pre ordered boxes of produce, then sign up for the time you're going to go there to pick it up. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Tracker. Still watching this rain and thunderstorm activity that's closing in on Atlanta right now and keeping an eye on a storm that is south of Meriwether County and also Troop County down in Harris County that has had some rotation with it. We had a tornado warning earlier in Harris County that rotation weakened, but we're still keeping an eye on this and we're hoping that that does not tighten back up as it gets closer to Meriwether County or Troop County. If they issue a warning for that, we'll be breaking in uh, for that with some extended coverage. But here's what we're watching right now. In Atlanta, uh, no rain here right now, but it's just to the west of us. Uh, you can see these showers as they've been coming in from Alabama. Had a lot of lightning with it and pockets of heavy rain, but I want you to notice how the lightning symbols here uh, start diminishing. We don't have as much lightning with this now. That's showing uh, that this part of the storm is weakening. It was pretty strong in Cleburne County. We had a lot of heavy rain. Folks on Facebook Live, that's why you see my phone right here. We've got about 500 people on right now, and many of them were saying it was really storming over in West Georgia. I'm keeping an eye on the National Weather Service chat just to make sure they don't issue a warning there on the south side. But here you can see these storms that are coming through West Cobb, moving into Cherokee. They're over Bartow, pretty much along 75 there, into Gordon County and Calhoun that's approaching Pickens, Cherokee coming through Cobb. It'll be in Fulton in just a little bit and it's approaching the west side of the perimeter. Now the lightning count with this has come down. We only have one lightning strike in the past 15 minutes and that's right there in northwest Cobb. Maybe you heard thunder with that just a little while ago. Now this is another thing that we're watching. OK, Harris County. Uh, a storm with some thunder and lightning, and this did have rotation with it earlier, and we had a tornado warning in Harris County earlier. That expired at 845. Again, not in our viewing area. That's why we didn't break into programming on 11 Alive. That's why you didn't see the crawl rolling across the screen because it's in the Columbus <laughs> viewing area. But we're keeping an eye on this. This has been showing signs of weakening this rotation just south of Pine Mountain. If this happens to get up into Troop County or Meriwether County, and if it tightens up and they have to issue a warning of that, then we will have to break into programming, not only here on the ATL, but also on 11 Alive. So this is broader now, no indicators of having to issue a warning, but it's approaching Pine Mountain, and that eventually then would cross over the line into Meriwether County, not too far off from Warm Springs. A lot of lightning with that and heavy rain, and it's moving very slowly, only at about 15 miles an hour, so it's not moving quickly at all into those counties, but we're finding Atlanta over on the east side. This rain is about to move in and a lot of the people on Facebook Live are saying, Chris, is it going to get bad? Is it going to get bad? Actually, yeah, we're going to see some rain coming through, but it's actually weakening, so I don't expect any bad stuff here. It's just keeping an eye on that system down uh, to the south of us that could impact Meriwether and or Troop County. We also have Bertha. What is left of that is a tropical depression that's moving up into North Carolina. Not much happening with that. Take a look at this full screen so you can get a good look at this. I know it's kind of dark there, uh, but this is our live camera in Rome uh, that we have had some heavy rain that came through there a little bit earlier. Uh, you can see the water on the lens and the dark clouds there, but things are a little bit calmer in the Rome area right now. And we have a marginal risk for a few storms again tomorrow. This dark green color that you see here is the level one risk. We don't think it's going to be widespread tomorrow here in Metro Atlanta, but any showers and storms that develop could have some damaging wind, lightning or hail with it. Temperatures right now 72. It's cooled down to 63 in Carrollton with the rain. Rome, you cooled down to 65 with the rain. Everybody else pretty much in those lower 70s and some upper 60s tomorrow. A six on the wasometer highs near 83 degrees with some scattered showers that will be developing. Here's the uh, forecast track. A lot of that rain coming through is going to diminish tonight. And then in the morning, we'll see a few scattered showers, but nothing particularly strong. And then as you can see, it's not widespread rain tomorrow, just pretty scattered stuff. But again, the ones that develop could have some some strong winds with them. So here's what we're watching on Thursday. A 50% chance for showers and a few thunderstorms possible. Highs near 83 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. And then a 30% chance for showers Friday with highs near 85 and then it goes down to a 20% chance on Saturday and then drier weather Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. When I say drier weather, I mean more than just a lack of rain, but we're going to have lower humidity and pretty comfortable temperatures closer to where we should be, mainly in the lower 80s. 
a lot of people are feeling pretty powerless. Misty Lackey in Atlanta was feeling that, especially when the people she knows and cares about were going every day to work in the hospitals. So she decided to do something about it by doing what she does best. Matt Pearl has her story. Art is so powerful, and if we can use that for the good, that means so much more. Misty Lackey is a teacher by day, an artist every time else. Since March, she's stayed home, thinking of those who can't. I have two best friends who are on the front lines, who are, who are one's a doctor and one is a nurse. I get to stay home because of them. As a human being and, and humanity, you know, it's like, I, what can I do? At a time that has crippled Atlanta's arts industry, so many artists continue to create. The nonprofit Living Walls has spurred hundreds to post hashtag signs of solidarity. Misty chose to add one more. Just to say thank you. I feel like that's the least I can do. Um, I can paint and I can encourage kindness. So for several days over several weeks, Misty took to her canvas. She painted the skyline, then the shadows, then the hearts. She finished with a word that's required right now by so many. I think everybody wants to help. We really are truly all in this together. Like We're not alone. So I'm hoping that's what the art portrays. Matt, I recognize that last shot. The piece is right there outside of Piedmont Fayette Hospital. Is that where it's going to stay? Yeah, Misty says for the next few weeks, her work will be stationed outside the hospital so it can greet workers as they arrive. Then it will move inside. It is the perfect gallery for it. Matt, thanks a lot. Despite reopening plans, doctors say social distancing is still a must. It's why some families are starting a new trend of staying in their germ bubbles. We break it down and verify if it works next. It's brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News. 
All right, we are all feeling it. Social isolation can be really hard, especially for families with little ones who might not understand the need to stay apart from their friends during COVID-19. So when we heard this new term, germ bubble, we thought it might be too good to be true. So the idea here is to form a group with one or two other families. You can all see each other, but no one else. It sounds exciting for people who are sick of quarantine, but does it work? We sent our Caitlin Ross to verify. Welcome to my germ bubble. That's how my brother greeted me after not seeing him in person for the past three months. It was a new term to me, germ bubble, but his family has been practicing it the entire quarantine. Basically what it means is they formed a tight circle of friends who only get together with each other and talk frequently about any exposure to COVID-19 any of them may have had to keep all of them safe. Turns out he's not the only one. On Facebook, Autumn and Aubrey both told me they were doing the same thing, but called theirs a quarantine and quarantine crew. I guess that sounds better than germ bubble. The germ bubble, uh, or as I like to call it, the quarantine family. Whatever you want to call it, does it work? That's why we called in ER doctor Murdad Sami. He's been treating COVID-19 patients since the first cases were diagnosed in Georgia and told me he's been advocating for these germ bubbles just as long. We can do fun things, but we have to be wise about it. The first rule of the germ bubble? The, the rules are... Well, first of all, you have to be able to trust that person that they're going to follow the rules. He says it's important to be on the same page as the other families in your germ bubble. Talk through what's acceptable, like going to the grocery store, and what's not, like dining inside a restaurant. On Facebook, Emily says that's what she's doing with her daughter's friend's family. And Dr. Atsami says that's exactly how it's supposed to work. That's exactly it. We have to all be on the same page. We have to understand that we're going to abide by the rules and kind of go through all the scenarios that potentially could, could come about. Dr. Atsami recommends everyone get tested for COVID-19 before you start hanging out. Then you have to quarantine completely until those results come back negative. Finally, you have to be willing to speak up if something doesn't feel right. Everybody understands that if we break the rules, then we'll just have to call it off. But if you all agree to the same rules and you all agree to follow them, we can verify that yes, germ bubbles really do work. Still to come, the Atlanta Motor Speedway has been thrown around as a solution for the city street racing problem. But Atlanta's police chief says it's not about just having a place to race. Disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. 
Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers in the Storm Tracker Center tonight as we are tracking storms that are moving through two areas that I want you to watch. Number one, this that's moving into Metro Atlanta on the west side. It is showing signs of weakening. We have some pockets of heavy rain uh, through Cobb County. I just had folks on Facebook Live saying it was really raining heavily in Powder Springs. That goes up 75 uh, into parts of Cherokee County around Alatoona Lake, also into Bartow County, Gordon County with some heavy rain. That's moving into Pick the rest of Cherokee eventually that'll move into Fulton County. It's right here on the west side of the perimeter right now with some of that heavier rain pushing in to the Smyrna area. Some thunder and lightning with this, but the lightning count has come down. We really have only had uh, fewer lightning strikes here on the north side. On to the south of us, though, a couple of things that we're watching here. Uh, this cell right here that is just south of Troop County, just south of uh, Meriwether County, is where we had some broad rotation earlier. We did have a, a tornado warning for Harris County that's in the Columbus viewing area just outside of our viewing area uh, that that expired at 845, but it still has some weak rotation with it. We're watching this closely. The National Weather Service is watching this closely to see if it's going to tighten up any a little bit uh, to potentially have a tornado warning. Uh, so I want you folks in the southern parts of Troop County also in the southern parts of Meriwether County to keep an eye on this because we have had some broad rotation with it. And we don't have a tornado warning now, but if it tightens up, we will have to break into programming if they issue a warning for Meriwether County and or Troop County. Additional strong storms here right along uh, 185, uh, just north of Columbus, with a lot of thunder and lightning and very heavy rain with that. We don't have anything suspect out of that part of the storm as it moves through those parts of Harris County. Again, here in Atlanta, we're watching this area of rain that gets closer to us, but it's general showers, some rumbles of thunder, a little more thunder and lightning here in northwest Georgia, Dade, Walker County, Whitfield County. You're getting in on some of that thunder and lightning there as well. Here's what's left of Bertha moving up into North Carolina. That's just a tropical depression right now. Uh, let me take you out there live right now. I've switched our camera from the Rome camera to the uh, Noonan camera. This is in Coweta County. You can see the the lights on at the church right there. We have had some rain uh, that has been coming into Coweta. You can barely see that rain there at the uh, street light. I'll move this camera in a minute so y'all can see that rain a little bit better, but we do have rain in Coweta County in Noonan right now. Uh, tomorrow, we have another risk for some storms to come in. Now, it's not going to be widespread, but we do have a marginal or level one of five risk. Any of those isolated storms that uh, could develop out there could have some wind with them, hail or lightning. Uh, we'll break down that timing for you coming up in just a few minutes. The CDC is sending out a stern warning. They say antibody tests may not be accurate enough to make important policy decisions. According to the agency, the test may give more inaccurate readings, especially if the virus is not prevalent in the community. As a result, the CDC says the antibody test results should not be used to make decisions regarding people returning to work. The test should also not be used to determine the immune status of individuals until the presence, the durability and duration of immunity is established. New reporting from NBC News is also raising questions about the accuracy of COVID-19 tests. Experts tell NBC News up to one in five tests could be missing positive cases. Joe Henke explains. Since March, dozens of tests for COVID-19 have been quickly developed with the Food and Drug Administration granting emergency use authorization so they could be rushed into use. <coughs> Now, NBC News is reporting experts believe tests used to diagnose the virus may be missing up to 20% of positive cases, meaning they instead show a false negative. There are several possible reasons. No test is 
hundred percent perfect all the time. Earlier this month, we talked with Dr. Maria Sundrum, an epidemiologist with Emory's Rollins School of Public Health. She said one type of COVID-19 test includes collecting specimens to test with a nasal swab, and if not done properly, the person taking the sample could miss the virus. If I took a nasal swab, and I, I tested it and it was negative. I just know that there is no virus in my nose, but there could be some in my throat. Timing is also key, according to researchers with the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health in Baltimore, who published a study this month in the Annals of Internal Medicine. The lead author telling NBC News testing too early after exposure to the virus substantially raises the risk of a false negative. And quote, if you have someone who has been exposed and they've started to develop symptoms, it probably makes sense to wait a few days before testing. The research team found testing three days after symptoms appeared returned the most accurate results. Dr. Sundrum said antibody tests designed to find signs in a blood sample that someone had the coronavirus can also return false negatives. A person may have recently been exposed to coronavirus, but if their immune system has not had time to produce the antibodies needed to test positive, their test result would come back negative. You won't see a big increase in antibody until maybe two weeks after the in initial infection. And because of the chance of false negative test results, no matter the results someone receives, positive or negative, Dr. Sundrum recommends they continue to follow CDC health precautions, including wearing a mask in public, social distancing, and hand washing to protect themselves and everyone around them. Days after a major street racing crackdown in Atlanta, the city started talking about potentially using the Atlanta Motor Speedway as a legal and safe solution. However, Atlanta's police chief has some concerns. 11 Alive's Tracy Amick Pier explains. Atlanta police say the good news is after the major crackdown two weekends ago, they've only had a few more arrests for street racing. But when it comes to a long term solution, Chief Shields tells me that it's not just a matter of giving them a place where they can race. They want their five minutes of Internet fame and they want to show that they are doing this illegally. They're doing it on city streets. They're stopping interstates. So police chief Erica Shields says a legal venue like the Atlanta Motor Speedway wouldn't stop the illegal street racing problem. Chief Shields says during the bust two weekends ago, there were sponsors involved from as far away as Detroit. Interestingly, Detroit had set up a legal space for people to do just that, to drive. But there was this group of individuals who had no interest in that. They want the illegality of it, so they came to Atlanta. So they will continue to crack down here because with street racing, she says lives are at stake. Their conduct is so reckless. It's it's just astounding how little regard they have for any human life, including their own. Chief Shields told me that now they're trying to find and arrest the sponsors since they are encouraging illegal activity. But since those sponsors are from out of state, that operation will likely involve the FBI. It's been three months since the first reported COVID-19 death. Since then, there's been thousands more. We remember those we lost next. Bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. 
because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just. Now to the mask debate. There is one that's becoming really popular online, but medical experts say it does more harm than good. You may have seen them advertised online or worn in public. They're masks with what's called an exhalation valve, promising better comfort than traditional masks, offering a cooler and easier to breathe experience. According to the CDC, the mask with the exhalation valves keeps the person safe, but not the population. Exactly. Yeah, and that's exactly correct. 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy says the CDC makes it clear on their website that these particular masks help no one but the person who's wearing it. The exhalation valve or the valve that helps you breathe out sends all of your breath out into the environment. She says if you have the coronavirus, you are still potentially spewing COVID-19 droplets through the valve to others. Wearing the proper mask without an exhalation valve keeps everyone safe. When we talk about wearing masks to protect us against coronavirus, we're actually wearing the mask to protect other people from our droplets or germs. So to learn how to pick your next mask, we have linked the CDC's recommendations to our website at 11alive.com. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Kind of busy in the Storm Tracker Center tonight. I'm here in the actual studio versus in my basement tonight as I wanted to be here to track these storms moving through. What you see coming into Atlanta, not severe. It is uh, some rain. We have a little bit of thunder and lightning with it, but it's really showing signs of weakening as it's closing in on Atlanta, crossing over 75. We have a good bit of lightning still in northwest Georgia that came through Dade, Walker County, uh, Catoosa County, also into Whitfield County, moving closer to Murray County. County, northern parts of Gordon County, a little bit of lightning with that too. I want you to see though how as it comes out of Alabama and through West Georgia that you're seeing the line kind of shrink up a little bit and we're not seeing as much red. We're not seeing as many lightning strikes with it as we had a little bit earlier. This is closing in on Atlanta, the west side with some rain here, up 75 through Cobb County, through Cherokee County, moving into Pickens County as well. Eventually that will push into Dawson County for Scythe County, North Fulton, but it's going to be just general rain rain with some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning about to move in to downtown there in the Midtown area. This is the part of the system that's been a little trickier to watch with more thunder and lightning with that. We even had some rotation with this earlier where we had a, a tornado warning uh, that was issued for Harris County. That's just outside of our viewing area. That's why you didn't see the crawl running at the bottom of the screen, and that's why we didn't break into programming on 11 Alive. What is left of that now is moving into the southern parts of Meriwether County, and there is still a little bit of rotation with it, but it's not strong enough to issue a tornado warning. 
as it pushes into Meriwether County. The National Weather Service did just issue what they call a significant weather advisory, indicating some strong winds with that. Also noting an area of brief rotation, and so we keep an eye on that if that happens to tighten up and they have to issue a warning uh, for this uh, in Meriwether County, then we will have to break into programming on 11 Alive for that. But this is near Pine Mountain, just to the east of Pine Mountain. Here's Nebula, Manchester, Warm Springs right here, White Sulphur Springs. This is just to the south of that. And again, uh, not tight enough to issue a tornado warning with that right now. And we think we're continuing to see signs of that weakening. Uh, along 185 through Harris County between LaGrange and Columbus here, that stretch of interstate, really heavy rain with thunder and lightning uh, in that area right now, but no rotation there either. So watching this coming through the Atlanta area, additional rain back into Mississippi, but really once we get through this tonight, we're just gonna have a few general showers, nothing really bad that'll be moving our way. Uh, we also have what's left of Bertha right up here in North Carolina. It was a tropical storm that came in near Charleston this morning and has been downgraded to a tropical depression. Let me show you what we're watching out there right now. This is uh, what's happening with tropical depression Bertha. The winds at 30 miles an hour. That's going to move up toward the north, staying inland, continuing to weaken, not really having much of an impact on our weather. It really just kind of reinforced the easterly flow that kept us a little cooler today with temperatures in the 70s. Here's a live look. This is in Rome. Uh, but keeping an eye on this as the roads are wet, the camera lens is wet as well from the showers that came through earlier. But things are looking a little bit better for Rome right now. We had a high today of 74. We should be at 83 this time of year. That was nine degrees below the average. And and look how much rain we picked up today, about an inch and a third of rain. So look at our surplus now 15 inches above where we should be in rainfall. We could use a dry pattern to move in, and we're going to have that moving our way once we get into uh, into next week. We have another soggy day today, scattered showers tomorrow, but we're warming up into the 80s. But we do see that dry pattern on the way as we head into next week. So on the wasometer for your Thursday, we're going to go with the six highs near 83 degrees with scattered showers around and not widespread rain and not widespread severe weather, but any showers that develop tomorrow could have some strong winds with them, maybe some hail uh, and uh, some lightning with them. This is at lunchtime. A lot of that starts to fall apart later on in the afternoon tomorrow. So here's the seven day outlook showing those temperatures warming up to 83 tomorrow. 50% chance for showers 85 Friday rain chance coming down to 30% and then on Saturday just in time for the weekend only a 20% chance for showers. This is the dry pattern I was telling you about Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Not only dry, meaning the absence of rain, but also the relative humidity levels are going to come down to feeling pretty nice with temperatures in the lower 80s and then mid 80s by Wednesday. It's been less than three months since we got reports of the first deaths linked to coronavirus in the U.S. Since then, time has stood still for so many of us, but not for the virus, which has as of today killed 100,000 people in America. A moment that challenges our comprehension. Here's NBC's Lester Holt. It's like we're living the stages of grief all at once. Denial, anger, bargaining, despair, and perhaps even acceptance. Is it possible we've come to accept 100,000 deaths, or are we simply unable to process it? What, after all, is death on that scale supposed to look like? Is it the grim procession of covered stretchers carried to waiting hearses, or the precious cargo of caskets stacked in mortuaries? Funeral director Joe Ruggiero's world for the last two months. We're dealing with situations where, you know, one spouse dies and the other spouse is, is sick in the hospital and, and families don't even know which, which way to go with things. Do we, 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 you know, stay for mom or do we, you know, take care of dad's services? 100,000 names, so many names, almost impossible to read, and so many faces a tear-stained fabric of crushing grief woven by 100,000 stories. We went on our first seat at 10 years old. My mom took us to the movies. Rob Weber was a fireman, Danielle Weber's husband of 21 years, a hands-on dad to his daughter Alexa, taken by COVID at 44. I don't really know what else to say. I lost the love of my life. Um, you know, I'll never get over it. I'll never know how to get past it. Their stories move us. Ron Golden, the truck driver and proud Native American Marine veteran. Adolph T.J. Mendez, father of six, who helped teach Sunday school. Gerda Gerbatsky, who barely escaped Nazi-occupied Austria. 
Detective Mary Lou Armour, who helps survivors of sexual assault. The toll has been compared to casualties of our modern wars, but they took years. This took weeks. And unlike wars, there are no stirring touchstones of grief, no arrivals of flag-draped coffins. But there are heroes, like Marilyn Howard, a school nurse, an immigrant from Guyana, who helped raise her five siblings after their mom died. She really was, there's no other way to say it, but being the glue that, that cemented us all together. What hold does, does Marilyn's passing leave in our, in our world? Well, I think the world has lost uh, a nurse who would have been in the fight had she not gotten sick so early. I've lost a sister. Uh, uh, my family members have lost a godmother and an aunt and niece who uh, is irreplaceable. She was 53. This, of course, is not over, but we choose milestones to take stock, to remember, to share our sorrows until, as a country, we can confront the depths of our collective pain face to face. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's. A doctor's assistant at the Atlanta VA hospital left work to see the health care workers are heroes sign just tattered and the balloons were drooping. So he wrote a reminder that the heroes are still hard at work. Too Day 
Joseph Hanley says he's inspired as he watches his colleagues in the COVID ICU work week after week. He wrote the song Everyday Heroes to encourage them and all of us. His friend Steve Collins sang it, and we have the entire song on 11alive.com. We're still watching that rain that's moving through the area right now. It is a lot weaker as it comes into Atlanta. It was stronger in West Georgia a little bit earlier. The lightning count with that has really come down over Metro Atlanta and northward. We still have a lot of that lightning there on the south side, though, uh, down as you get into Meriwether County and Troop County, some heavy rain. We've been watching some weak rotation with that, too, but no warnings with that right now. We're going to keep tracking this for you and have much more at 10 right here on the ATL and then again at 11 on up late. All right, thanks for hanging around with us. Primetime rolls on at 10, and we'll see you on Uplay at 11 on 11 Alive. Every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, we... 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Protests in Minneapolis over the death of 46-year-old George Floyd. This comes as the mayor there calls for swift charges against the arresting police officer. A total of four officers were fired after cell phone video shows one officer kneeling on Floyd's neck for about nine to 10 minutes. He told officers he couldn't breathe. Floyd later died. 
at the hospital. Floyd's death has sparked outrage and pain for so many people all across the country, including Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottom. The mayor said that she had a conversation with her mother who lived through the civil rights movement. She says police brutality in America now is reminiscent of the fight for civil rights in the 1960s. It, it very much is like I'm sure what my mother witnessed watching television or participating in sit-ins when you saw fire hoses turned on um, African-American protesters and when you saw the body of Emmett Till. Um, this is what it feels like to her again. And for me, it says that it is, it is as painful and as hurtful as it feels to me. The now. mayor said that she believes in the promise of the country, but senseless killings like this must stop. It takes people from all races and walks of life, she said, to stand up, not just African Americans who are being targeted. George Floyd's death, the officer's actions, all the more shocking because of similar cases in recent years. John Sherrick explains the attention focuses again on officer training all over the country. July of last year, now former Atlanta police officer Matthew Johns pleads guilty to this, running up to a 15-year-old suspect who was already face down and handcuffed and kicking him in the head and pressing his knee into the teen's neck until the teen lost consciousness. February of this year, now former Gwinnett County police officer Robert McDonald convicted of running up to a suspect who was face down and handcuffed and stomping on his head. This week, a now former Minneapolis police officer seen on video pressing his knee into the neck of George Floyd as he pleads for his life. Floyd dies as three other officers do nothing to intervene. It is shameful. It is immoral. Former DeKalb County Public Safety Director Dr. Cedric Alexander, who has led police and also investigated police, says bluntly, police do not learn to arrest people like this at any of the nation's academies. It ended the failure of the individual officer to make moral and ethical and sound judgments. If you don't have the capability of doing that, you're in the wrong profession. You can't teach compassion. You either come with it or you don't. You can't teach that in any academy, in any class. Alexander says officer training involves learning self-defense and protecting the public from violence. And when they need to be able to be tough and affect arrest, they're able to do so in a constitutional, well-trained manner. There's ways in which we do this. But we just can't treat people like dogs and animals. And no parts of this nation should accept. Alexander expects those officers will face criminal charges. And he says it's also time for departments everywhere to take another look within at their own cultures to see if they enable ethical and humane policing. For the latest developments on the push for police force training and the death of George Floyd, just head to 11alive.com. You can also find the Atlanta police chief's comments on the investigation. Some parts of Metro Atlanta getting struck by rain tonight, and there's a chance for some severe storms tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist is Chris Holcomb. Yeah, we're watching this line that's weakening, thank goodness, Jeff, as it comes into Atlanta. It has some rain with it, but this is not as strong as it was back into Alabama or in West Georgia. We do have some pockets of moderate rain on the north side. We're not seeing in the much in the form of lightning on the north side right now. We had a lot of that earlier. In fact, you can see as this moves in from the west to the east, you see how the Number one, the line is kind of thinning out, but also not as much yellow, not as much orange, not as much red with that. And that just shows us that it is weakening. Some of the light rain coming into Atlanta now, some more moderate rain in Cherokee County up into Pickens County. No lightning with this right now in the metro area. And there's that light rain that's coming inside the perimeter there from the west side, about to cross over the connector 85 here and move over into parts of DeKalb County. This has been the part tonight that has been strong. And we even had a tornado warning earlier tonight in Harris. Harris County. That's between LaGrange and Columbus in this county right here. What is left of that weak rotation now is in the southern parts of Meriwether County. It is not strong enough to have a tornado warning with that in Meriwether County, but we're keeping an eye on that. The main thing is just the really heavy rain that's coming through Meriwether County, Troop County and Harris County. A lot of lightning with that too. We've got about 32 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes and that's moving to the east, but it also is going to weaken. Take a look now at the bigger picture. Let me show you what we're watching here. As you can see in North Carolina, that bit of counterclockwise flow, that's what's left of Bertha, which is now a tropical depression. Here's a live look in Coweta County where we still have wet roads and some rain 
rain that's moving through there. And then look at this, Jeff, you mentioned the low chance for some stronger thunderstorms tomorrow. We are in that marginal risk. We'll let you know what some of the impacts could be and talk about the potential timing in just a few minutes. Now to COVID-19 in Georgia, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottom says an improvement in COVID-19 data in Fulton County led her to loosen the city's quarantine guidelines just a little bit. This comes as the city of Atlanta moves into phase two of reopening the city. The city's guidelines are still stricter than the state law and the city's guidelines are voluntary. The guidelines now allow gatherings in the city of up to 10 people with social distancing while urging people to continue to stay home. Mayor Bottoms was among Governor Brian Kemp's critics when he opened up some businesses last month. I'm glad that the worst, as I predicted, has not happened. I'm, I'm very pleased to say that and it's nothing uh, to be gained by me wanting to be right on this, but I, I still think that we move too soon and I think that we still have to be thoughtful and just take it slow. If the numbers continue to improve and there's more testing, the city could consider taking applications again for special event permits. Our numbers team want to bring you more information about the data the mayor was talking about. We requested information by zip code from the Fulton County Board of Health to see where we are in terms of cases within the city of Atlanta and if there is indeed an increase underway. Here are the top three zip codes, 30331. By far the most impacted area. It is just east of Six Flags over Georgia. Neighborhoods like Greenbrier, Princeton Lakes, Mays, and Wisteria Gardens. The zip code is currently reporting 346 cases of COVID-19. 30318, also another area that's been rising. That zip code covers Underwood Hills all the way south to Bankhead. It also includes Cary Park and Lincoln Homes. We have seen 31 new cases there since last Friday. And 30342, another hot spot that we are watching. This is the area just north of Buckhead. That's Chastain Park all the way up to the edge of 285. It is the area of the city where we're seeing the biggest jump with 45 new cases over the past five days. All right, summer travel season is upon us. Now that many restrictions are being lifted or eased, that has families on the search for some summer fun. New at 10, Ryan Kruger has a story on how tourism in Georgia hopes to rebound. 2020 was supposed to be a record breaking year for Georgia beaches along the Golden Isles, but then COVID-19 happened. We estimate that most of April was a complete loss at about 90% down. Hotels emptied, conventions canceled, tourists stayed home. But this past weekend, the beaches were packed. The head of the Golden Isles Convention Bureau says business is now booming. I was surprised how quickly things have come back. We really started opening last weekend and many resorts, in fact, the vast majority of them have reported being sold out. The desire to get out is a strong one for many families. We're happy to get the kids out of the house. Um, they've been a little stir crazy. And it appears other families are craving sand, sun and surf. Bookings are at an all time record high. But the desire to get out is also causing a lot of outrage. This video of a crowded pool at the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri quickly went viral with many people calling it unsafe. Meanwhile, Disney World announced Wednesday it plans to reopen in July and Six Flags Over Georgia has released its guidelines to reopen and is awaiting approval. There are no restrictions at Georgia beaches and many business owners along the coast are expecting to have a record breaking month. Meanwhile, law enforcement will be on those beaches to enforce social distancing. All right, thanks, Ryan. 11 Alive is dedicated to bringing you facts and perspective throughout the pandemic. Check the special coronavirus section of our 11 Alive app on what the reopening phases mean for you and where Georgia stands on flattening the curve. New tonight, we are getting our first look at two family members accused of a chase and crash that killed a teen. Investigators want to find Rodney Harris and his nephew, Montrez Harris. Authorities say the pair were inside a car with two other men as Clayton County deputies chased them earlier this month. Police say the group hit a car on Moreland Avenue on the edge of Atlanta, killing 17-year-old Jada Delinardo. The other two men in the car are in custody. A food bank's aims to keep workers safe as demands increase. How local efforts are helping feed a growing number of Georgia families. And it's been three months since the first reported COVID-19 death. Since then, thousands more. We remember those we lost coming up in the next 30 minutes. It's safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers. The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only.
We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1101 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. The Atlanta Food Bank is now giving away 40% more food than before the pandemic. As they try to provide peace of mind to the community in need, they found themselves trying to give peace of mind to their own staff. Hope Ward found out the food bank, they found a way to keep workers safe as that demand continues to grow. And we are the grocery store for the people that we serve. When many people lost their jobs and had little money to feed their families, they turned to the Atlanta Community Food Bank. CEO Kyle Wade says the needs are steadily growing. We're now distributing uh, about 2 million pounds of food a week. Wade searched for ways to ensure workers entering their facility was safe. And Dr. William Yates provided a solution. But taking a temperature is something very simple that should be done in a non-contact way. After hearing the news of Georgia's reopening, Dr. Yates, a Chicago-based trauma surgeon with Atlanta Ties, donated a wall-mounted thermal detector to the bank. In the group that are symptomatic and have COVID, the number one thing that they're going to have is a fever. The detector screens a person's body temperature without any contact, giving off a notification if someone has an elevated fever. Although many people with COVID are asymptomatic and a fever doesn't always mean a person has the virus, Yates believes the thermal detector is the best solution under current circumstances. You can't draw everybody's blood and swab them and wait till it comes back. The food bank hopes to get a second device for a separate entrance that volunteers and agencies use to get food. Wade says when they fully reopen, no one will be allowed in without first getting a temperature screening. And Dragon SpaceX, unfortunately, um, we are not going to launch today. So today's launch of a manned SpaceX Falcon rocket aboard due to weather in Florida. As it was a tough day, you can see from those Florida skies, if you spent any time there this time of year, you know what that means. Everything was ready to go at the Kennedy Space Center, except the forecast. Those low clouds, lightning, thunderstorms, NASA scrubbed the mission at about 17 minutes prior to launch, 1653. This was to be the first manned space flight. From American soil in nearly nine years, the teams remain ready, though, and the next attempt will be Saturday afternoon. For those of you scoring at home, it will occur at 3.22 p.m. Eastern time. Chris, what about Florida? You know, you, you think about this time of year. Uh, by the time you get to 3.22 in the afternoon, uh, as June approaches, those heavy thunderstorms are always lurking somewhere. Yeah, and what's interesting is this was an instantaneous launch, meaning that if they didn't launch at 433 today, it wasn't going to happen. If they could have delayed that launch another 15 minutes, they probably would have had a window for oh, wow. it, you know. So uh, that's just how it is. But the next launch uh, date time uh, window has been set for Saturday. So we'll be watching for that on Saturday as well. Take a look at radar right now. You know, we've been watching these showers and some thunderstorms that have been moving through West Georgia coming in from Alabama, and we were expecting these to weaken 
weaken as they move in, and they are doing that right now. A lot weaker coming into Atlanta. We have some moderate showers up in North Georgia, up in Pickens County, Gilmer County. We had a lot of thunder and lightning with these earlier, but now all the lightning has gone away on the north side. However, down to the south, we're still dealing with some lightning there. These showers mainly light closing in on the city of Atlanta. A little bit of moderate activity back here in South Fulton County, also into Coweta. And then the heaviest rain is on the south side. So Atlanta's way up to the north. This is down 85 south toward LaGrange, over into Meriwether County around Warm Springs where we have some heavy rain with thunder and lightning right along 185 that goes through Harris County. A lot of heavy rain, thunder and lightning there. We did have a tornado warning earlier in Harris County due to some rotation that was detected there. Uh, that has now moved up into Meriwether County, but it's a lot broader now. Uh, we don't really have any big threats of any additional tornado warnings in Meriwether County, but just watching what's left of that rotation. Uh, but it was pretty good rotation that came through uh, those areas of, of uh, Harris County a little bit earlier near Pine Mountain, but now it's a lot weaker up near Warm Springs at this hour, but still some heavy rain and a lot of thunder and lightning. That's the main threats we have with that. In fact, we see about 27 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. Earlier we were saying 32. That's come down a little bit. We think that as this moves into Pike County, Upson County, Lamar County, maybe into a Spalding County, that this is going to be a lot weaker. We think that weakening trend is going to continue like it is here in the metro Atlanta area. Also, we're watching what is left of Bertha moving up into the North Carolina area. Some additional showers in Tennessee, a little bit more back in the Mississippi, and we're not finished with the rain yet. Even though we're going to see some breaks as this line moves through, we have another chance for some showers tomorrow. Take a live look out there right now. I want you to see what we're watching. This is in Coweta County. You see the wind is blowing there from the flag there in front of the courthouse. The roads are wet from the showers that we had earlier. We had some pretty good rain in Coweta County earlier. That's all moving out tomorrow. We're back to a marginal risk. That's a level one of five risk for some isolated severe storms. We don't think it's going to be widespread, but any scattered showers that develop tomorrow could have some damaging wind, lightning and or hail. But again, we don't think it's going to be a widespread coverage of rain. You can see clouds tonight, a few scattered showers in the morning, the potential for some spotty showers. But we start warming up during the day to 71 degrees and then eventually we get up to 83. It's going to be a lot warmer than we were today. We're going to go with the six on the wasometer. Some of those scattered showers. That's our scale from one to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day in the morning. A few scattered showers around, not widespread. Lunchtime, just some spotty showers. And then in the afternoon, the rain chance is actually going to be a little bit lower. But remember, any of these that develop could have some wind with them. And then a quieter evening tomorrow. And then going into Friday, we're going to see our rain chances not totally going away, but at least they come down a little bit to 30%. Friday highs near 85, down to 20% on Saturday with a high of 84. Drier air Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with no rain and lower humidity too with highs in the lower 80s Monday and Tuesday back to the mid 80s on Wednesday. Take a look at your weather wow moment for today. This is a, a cool look from a drone. This is from Blake Rob in Carrollton who likes to put his drone up, take pictures and videos for us, capture some cool clouds today as those storms and some of the rain uh, was moving in. We'd love to see your weather wow moment. A lot of times we get these from our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers page. If you want to be a part of that group on Facebook, just search 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Ask to become a member. We'll let you in. And you can be a part of this exclusive local weather community. Despite reopening plans, doctors say social distancing is still a must. It's why some families are starting a new trend of staying in their germ bubbles. We're going to break it down and verify if it works next. Weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 
televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Social isolation, really tough for everybody. I mean, if you've got kids or a lot of family members that like to visit, nobody really wants to deal with staying at home because of COVID-19 or isolating yourself. We are social creatures. So when we hear this new term called germ bubble, we thought this is a good one to explore. It might be too good to be true. The idea is you form a nuclear group with one, two other families perhaps, so you all can interact. That way you're not an island because no man is an island. It, so <laughs> it sounds exciting for people that are sick of quarantine, but does it work? Here's Caitlin Ross. Welcome to my germ bubble. That's how my brother greeted me after not seeing him in person for the past three months. It was a new term to me, germ bubble, but his family has been practicing it the entire quarantine. Basically what it means is they formed a tight circle of friends who only get together with each other and talk frequently about any exposure to COVID-19 any of them may have had to keep all of them safe. Turns out he's not the only one. On Facebook, Autumn and Aubrey both told me they were doing the same thing, but called theirs a quarantine and quarantine crew. I guess that sounds better than germ bubble. The germ bubble, uh, or as I like to call it, the Corrin family. Whatever you want to call it, does it work? That's why we called in ER doctor Murdad Sami. He's been treating COVID-19 patients since the first cases were diagnosed in Georgia and told me he's been advocating for these germ bubbles just as long. We can do fun things, but we have to be wise about it. The first rule of the germ bubble? The rules are... Well, first of all, you have to be able to trust that person that they're going to follow the rules. He says it's important to be on the same page as the other families in your germ bubble. Talk through what's acceptable, like going to the grocery store, and what's not, like dining inside a restaurant. On Facebook, Emily says that's what she's doing with her daughter's friend's family. And Dr. Atsami says that's exactly how it's supposed to work. That's exactly it. We have to all be on the same page. We have to understand that we're going to abide by the rules and kind of go through all the scenarios that potentially could, could come about. Dr. Atsami recommends everyone get tested for COVID-19 before you start hanging out. Then you have to quarantine completely until those results come back negative. Finally, you have to be willing to speak up if something doesn't feel right. Everybody understands that if we break the rules, then we'll just have to call it off. But if you all agree to the same rules and you all agree to follow them, we can verify that yes, germ bubbles really do work. Jeff, I guess we're totally considered a germ bubble, right? <laughs> you know, I enjoy being in your bubble. I, yeah. I, I don't mean that to sound wrong, but <laughs> I'm very comfortable being in your bubble. It's been a safe bubble thus far. <laughs> we have good health. All right, time for me to head out to get ready for Uplight coming up at 11 on 11 Alive. All right, we'll see, we'll see you in about 36 minutes over in 11 Alive with you and Ron. Here's what's coming up on the Big 36. The Atlanta Motor Speedway has been thrown around as a solution for the city street racing problem. But Atlanta's police chief says it's not just about having a place to race. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 
There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because Days after a major street racing crackdown in Atlanta, the city started talking about potentially using the Atlanta Motor Speedway as a legal and safe solution. Atlanta's police chief has some concerns. Here's 11 Alive's Tracy A. McPhear. Atlanta police say the good news is after the major crackdown two weekends ago, they've only had a few more arrests for street racing. But when it comes to a long term solution, Chief Shields tells me that it's not just a matter of giving them a place where they can race. They want their five minutes of Internet fame and they want to show that they are doing this illegally. They're doing it on city streets, they're stopping interstates. So police chief Erica Shields says a legal venue like the Atlanta Motor Speedway wouldn't stop the illegal street racing problem. Chief Shields says during the bust two weekends ago, there were sponsors involved from as far away as Detroit. Interestingly, Detroit had set up a legal space for people to do just that, to drive. But there was this group of individuals who had no interest in that. They want the illegality of it, so they came to Atlanta. So they will continue to crack down here because with street racing, she says lives are at stake. Their conduct is so reckless. It's, it's just astounding how little regard they have for any human life, including their own. Chief Shields told me that now they're trying to find and arrest the sponsors since they are encouraging illegal activity. But since those sponsors are from out of state, that operation will likely involve the FBI. 
President Trump threatening social media companies with the prospect of new regulation. Last night, the president fired numerous accusations at Twitter, claiming the company was stifling his free speech. The claims come after Twitter slapped a fact check label on two of the president's tweets, including one saying that mail in ballots will be anything less than substantially fraudulent. This morning, the president continued to make accusations, even threatened the company with, quote, big action to follow. Today, Twitter defended the fact checking message on the president's tweets, saying in part the tweets contained potentially misleading information and they were labeled to provide additional context around mail-in ballots. And the president has promised on Twitter that he is going to have something to say on the subject coming up tomorrow morning. The FBI is still searching for a college senior accused of murdering two people in Connecticut. These images came of Peter Manfredonia at a gas station in Pennsylvania. He's a senior at the University of Connecticut. That's in Hartford. He's suspected of going on a rampage, killing two men last week. According to police, a firefighter spotted a man matching his description last night, but then fled. He has now been on the run for six days. New tonight, the CDC sending out a warning. They say antibody tests may not be accurate enough to make important policy decisions. According to the agency, the test may give more inaccurate readings, especially if the virus is not prevalent in the community. As a result, the CDC says the antibody test results should not be used to make decisions regarding people returning to work. The tests should also not be used to determine the immune status in individuals until the presence, durability, and duration of immunity is established. It's been less than three months since we first received reports of the initial deaths linked to COVID-19 in the United States. Since then, time has stood still for so many, but not for the virus, which as of today has killed officially 100,000 people in the United States. A moment that challenges all of us. Here's NBC's Lester Holt. It's like we're living the stages of grief all at once. Denial, anger, bargaining, despair, and perhaps even acceptance. Is it possible we've come to accept 100,000 deaths, or are we simply unable to process it? What, after all, is death on that scale supposed to look like? Is it the grim procession of covered stretchers carried to waiting hearses, or the precious cargo of caskets stacked in mortuaries? Funeral director Joe Ruggiero's world for the last two months. We're dealing with situations where, you know, one spouse dies and the other spouse is, is sick in the hospital and, and families don't even know which, which way to go with things. Do we, 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 you know, stay for mom or do we, you know, take care of dad's services? 100,000 names, so many names, almost impossible to read, and so many faces a tear-stained fabric of crushing grief woven by 100,000 stories. We went on our first seat at 10 years old. My mom took us to the movies. Rob Weber was a fireman, Danielle Weber's husband of 21 years, a hands-on dad to his daughter Alexa, taken by COVID at 44. I don't really know what else to say. I lost the love of my life. Um, you know, I'll never get over it. I'll never know how to get past it. Their stories move us. Ron Golden, the truck driver and proud Native American Marine veteran. Adolph T.J. Mendez, father of six, who helped teach Sunday school. Gerda Gerbatsky, who barely escaped Nazi-occupied Austria. Detective Mary Lou Armour, who helps survivors of sexual assault. The toll has been compared to casualties of our modern wars. But they took years. This took weeks. And unlike wars, there are no stirring touchstones of grief, no arrivals of flag-draped coffins. But there are heroes, like Marilyn Howard, a school nurse, an immigrant from Guyana, who helped raise her five siblings after their mom died. She really was, there's no other way to say it, but being the glue and the, that cemented us all together. What hold does, does Marilyn's passing leave in our, in our world? Well, I think... The world has lost uh, a nurse who would have been in the fight had she not gotten sick so early. I've lost a sister. Uh, uh, my family members have lost a godmother and an aunt and niece who uh, is irreplaceable. She was 53. This, of course, is not over, but we choose milestones to take stock, to remember to share our sorrows until, as a country, 
we can confront the depths of our collective pain face to face. It is a moment of redemption for years that he cannot get back. Millions of people have watched it. Archie Williams on America's Got Talent after 37 years in an infamous prison in Louisiana for a crime he did not commit. DNA cleared him. Natalie Morales spoke with him about freedom and how it's come. My name is Archie Williams. Tuesday night, Archie Williams took the stage on NBC's America's Got Talent and made an impression no one will soon forget. Don't let the sun go down on me. A show-stopping moment that he never could have imagined just last year. On March 21st, 2019, Archie Williams was released from Angola Prison in Louisiana, 37 years after being falsely accused and convicted of rape. Good and sweet right now. Archie was just 22 in 1983 when he was arrested and stood trial for the 1982 rape and stabbing of a white woman in her Baton Rouge home. Despite multiple alibis, fingerprints that didn't match his, and eyewitnesses saying Archie wasn't the guy, he was convicted and sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Being innocent is, is, is a thing where you never give up on yourself. That kept Archie going, and in 1995, after having already served 12 years, he wrote to the Innocence Project. By the grace of God, I'm still holding on, hoping and praying someone will answer my letter. His case was screaming out that he was innocent. It took a new judge in 2019 to order the fingerprint test. Within eight hours, they'd found the real rapist, and within a week, Archie was free. What does freedom feel like, Archie? I don't think you can explain it. The fullness of freedom. For Archie, this is what freedom sounds like. You found your voice. Singing was my, was my sport. That sport led him to an unusual place. I, uh, I was just incarcerated for 37 years for somebody else's crime. Ooh. 37 years of pain and suffering and now joy in each note. But losing everything is like the sun going down on me. Those words that much more powerful coming from Archie. I, I would never ever listen to that song uh, in the same way ever again. One person influenced my life and that was Oprah. And I remember her saying to me, if you're in a position to make television shows, you have the ability to change people's lives. And because of Archie, he's become an ambassador for the Innocence Project. We're going to do something about this together because I believe that when enough people unite, great things happen. They say the truth will set you free. For Archie, it's done more than that. It's given him back his life, including a daughter he didn't know he had. To think of her going all of his years without me. And a future with new dreams. I want to make up all the lost years. It's like the sun going down. Coming up next, a new report raising concerns about the accuracy of COVID-19 testing. We will break it down coming up. We have been tracking some showers and even some stronger thunderstorms that have been moving through the area. This system continues to weaken as it moves to the east, but you'll still hear a few raindrops out there tonight. Stay with us. I'll let you know if we'll see additional showers and even storms redeveloping tomorrow. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended by. New reporting from NBC News raising questions about the accuracy of COVID 19 tests. Experts tell NBC News up to one in five tests could be missing positive cases. Here's Joe Hankey. Since March, dozens of tests for COVID-19 have been quickly developed with the Food and Drug Administration granting emergency use authorization so they could be rushed into use. <coughs> now, NBC News is reporting experts believe tests used to diagnose the virus may be missing up to 20% of positive cases, meaning they instead show a false negative. There are several possible reasons. No test is 100% perfect all the time. Earlier this month, we talked with Dr. Maria Sundrum, an epidemiologist with Emory's Rollins School of Public Health. She said one type of COVID-19 test includes collecting specimens to test with a nasal swab, and if not done properly, the person taking the sample could miss the virus. If I took a nasal swab, and I, I tested it and it was negative. I just know that there is no virus in my nose, but there could be some in my throat. Timing is also key, according to researchers with the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health in Baltimore, who published a study this month in the Annals of Internal Medicine. The lead author telling NBC News testing too early after exposure to the virus substantially raises the risk of a false negative. And quote, if you have someone who has been exposed and they've started to develop symptoms, it probably makes sense to wait a few days before testing. The research team found testing three days after symptoms appeared returned the most accurate results. Dr. Sundrum said antibody tests designed to find signs in a blood sample that someone had the coronavirus can also return false negatives. A person may have recently been exposed to coronavirus, but if their immune system has not had time to produce the antibodies needed to test positive, their test result would come back negative. You won't see a big increase in antibody until maybe two weeks after the in initial infection. And because of the chance of false negative test results, no matter the results someone receives, positive or negative, Dr. Sundrum recommends they continue to follow CDC health precautions, including wearing a mask in public, social distancing, and hand washing to protect themselves and everyone around them. All right, Joe Hankey reporting for us tonight. Now, here is the story of graduating at the top of your class. It is never easy, but for Gwinnett County twins, Bill and Alice, they have one another and they have made all of it possible. Here's Elwin Lopez catching up with them. In case you didn't know, I'm Alice, and this is my little brother, Bill. That is me right there. 
Alice and Belle Ow are fraternal twins. Several weeks ago, they recorded this virtual graduation. I don't think I've heard any words as devastating as virtual graduation. Both finishing at the top of the Peachtree Ridge class of 2020. Alice is valedictorian and Bill as salutatorian. A title Bill says wouldn't have been possible without the support and motivation of his twin sister. It really inspired me to try to achieve salutatorian. And she definitely helped me learn that this was definitely a real possibility for me. Built in best friends, Alice and Bill say they are different in many ways. I'm definitely more uh, relaxed and more of a type B personality, whereas Alice is definitely a type A personality. That's how she became valedictorian. In the fall, they will find themselves apart for the first time. Bill will be heading to Princeton and Alice to Yale. I am kind of sad about having to be apart from Bill, and it is going to be like a challenging time for both of us. While challenging times are ahead for the twins this fall when they have to say their goodbyes, they told me they're spending a lot of their quality time together this summer instead of going on some of the trips they had planned separately before this pandemic. And when they've been able to accomplish so much together, I'm probably not the only parent wondering if they've got a little secret to their success. Cheryl, they tell me that they've leaned on one another, that they've collaborated together throughout high school, and Bill's advice to other students who may be spending more time at home during this pandemic is to perhaps learn a new skill, which could lead to finding a new passion, and he says that could make all the difference, both personally and academically. Well-rounded. All right, Ellen, thanks a lot. At the weather radar right now, and I can see a lot is moving through. And in fact, when I think about things moving through, I think about sports. Sports is always in action, so why don't we do that right now? In an exclusive interview with our friends at UGASports.com, Governor Kemp talked about what he is hoping sports fans will look like, uh, what sports will look like in the fall. Alex Glaze explains why the governor is optimistic that we will see fans in the stands, in the stadiums, during the football season. Governor Brian Kemp is one of the many football fans who wants to see college football in the fall. Everybody wants to have college football. We can't keep living in a shelter in place state uh, economically or, you know, just from a, a mental health standpoint. You know, people need, need outlets and certainly sports. Mm -hmm. Especially in the southeast is one of them. But even he admits he's not quite sure what it's going to look like just yet as some sports leagues around the world have begun to return to play during the COVID-19 pandemic, fanless games have become the norm. But Kemp is optimistic fans could be in the stands this fall. I'm optimistic, and um, I want to see it happen. I don't know if that looks like a capacity crowd on Labor Day night mm -hmm. or, you know, no, no fans at all. I think we've got to wait and see. The, the data continues to move in the right direction as for the players and coaches on the field a big concern has been what happens if someone tests positive that's definitely you know part of the puzzle because you're probably going to have that happen at, at some point and you know i don't think it's any different than with the public is just to make sure that you have the ability to to find that out as quickly as possible sports is a big part of our culture for many it's an escape from the trials and tribulations of everyday life sports bring the community together, but public safety needs to be the priority, and leagues around the world are trying to return to play as safely as possible. Hawks coach Lloyd Pierce has joined many in sports, addressing the killing in Minneapolis where a police officer had his knee on the neck of the late George Floyd. Pierce posted this on Instagram. He says, in part, there is an appropriate fear of being a black man in America. Feeling safe or protected is not an option for me. To think the hashtag justice for Floyd could easily be hashtag justice for Lloyd. The Major League Baseball Players Association calls baseball's latest economic proposal extremely disappointing. Aside from issues with player salaries, the union said the two sides also remain far apart on health and safety protocols aimed at starting the season around the 4th of July. Chase Elliott got a little bit of revenge against Kyle Busch 24 hours ago. Elliott ended Busch's seven race truck series winning streak, took the checkered in Charlotte. There was a $100,000 bounty that went toward COVID-19, 
for a Cup Series driver to be Bush, so Chase earned a little bit of extra money for charity. Chris is a man who is always overcoming adversity, whether it's the weather, whether it's perhaps dinner or a microphone that doesn't work. He is or always working for you. Batteries that go dead. <laughs> it, it, this is only the sixth hour of newscast that I've done here for a while, so sometimes that battery goes dead. We have more to go coming up at 11 o'clock. But one good thing that's winding down, not only my microphone batteries, but the rain is also kind of dying out a little bit, weakening as it comes has been coming in from the west. We had some uh, uh, intense lightning here, pockets of moderate to heavy rain, but now that's all kind of fading out. We have some light showers in metro Atlanta, inside the perimeter, some there in Cobb County, Douglas, South Fulton, down on the south side, Fayette, Clayton, Coweta County, a few light showers there. But a lot of this is falling apart as it moves over to the east. So in DeKalb County, you have some light showers. It'll be weak as it moves into Gwinnett County a little bit. Down to the south, this is where we still have some of the heavier rain and thunderstorm activity uh, that's moving through. Uh, we do have thunder and lightning here with this. This is in uh, parts of Meriwether County and that's moving into Pike County and Lamar County and Upson County with heavy rain. Now, this system has about 22 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. This also has had a history of producing some rotation where we had a tornado warning earlier tonight down in Harris County between LaGrange and Columbus. But here you see that heavier rain crossing over the line from Merriweather into a Pike County also into Upson County, a lot of heavier rain, thunder and lightning there near Manchester. And then all of this that we're seeing in Metro Atlanta is a lot weaker. So we think the bulk of that heavier stuff is gonna be uh, down to the south of us tonight should continue to weaken as it moves up toward the north and also to the east. Take a look out there right now. You can see what we're watching. This is our live look in Coweta County where we had some of those showers a little bit earlier. The roads are still wet there, but things have calmed down a good bit. We have that marginal risk for some isolated stronger storms tomorrow. Now here's the deal. We're going to have scattered showers around. We may even have some sunshine at times in between some of these scattered showers. Temperatures warm up into the 80s. That's going to add a little more instability. So even though we don't think we're going to have widespread storms, or severe weather. A few isolated ones that develop could have some damaging winds, lightning or hail. So we're going to see these temperatures pretty much holding steady uh, in the upper 60s pretty much overnight. A few scattered showers overnight in the morning. Some of those scattered showers as well with that mixture of sunshine and clouds. We're going to go with the six on the wisometer. It does get warmer tomorrow with high temperatures up to 83 degrees. Here's the seven day outlook showing that rain chance at 50% tomorrow. 30% on Friday and notice that trend how it's going down Saturday as well to 20% with highs in the middle 80s. We dry out for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday with no rain in the forecast for those days and also the humidity levels will be lower too with some pretty comfortable temperatures in the low to mid 80s. Stay with us. We'll wrap it up for 11 Alive News at 10 coming up. But interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. 
on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trial. And that is it for us tonight. We appreciate you watching, as always, here on 11 Alive News Prime Time. We begin at 7, and we finish around 11, like right now. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.